Dude, Kyle, th- they're looking for more. All right, baby, it's time to get to work. We got to start holding some chub around here. I mean, wh- why do we have some custom badges? Maybe some emojis coming? I know. I know somebody out there wants to drop some Dr- Krispies in the chat. Well, how about bonus videos? I mean, baby, oh, I'm talking about that deep diving action that you're not just going to find laying around on the channel. You got to get in here for it. I mean, what 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 if we sprinkle in a little bit of a live stream, an extra live stream, Kyle, Sunday mornings in season just before lineups lock a members only live stream. That sounds amazing because have you watched our live streams? The chat is absolutely nuts. You know what, maybe you just love what we do here and you've been a fan for a while now and you just wanna show a little bit of support. Hey, that's fine as well. This is the way to do it. That's right, this membership is for everyone, not just the super elite at only $4.99 a month. (laughs) You're gonna be holding Chubb all month long. Yo, what's going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle here to break down round one losers. Now, I already dropped round one winners on the channel a little bit ago. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check it out. But there were a few teams that, uh, I know I'm not, I don't want to bash them too much. It's only round one. Lots of things can still happen. But I just wasn't in love with how the first round went for them. And I picked them as my round one losers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you saw it before the video started. We've got a new membership here on YouTube that you can join for exclusive content, exclusive emojis, exclusive badges next to your name. Hit that up for $4.99. Also, got to give a shout out to our sponsors this year. If you haven't heard yet, we've re-upped with Manscaped. Manscaped is back to sponsor the Fantasy Headlighters here in 2021. So head over to manscaped.com. Code word headliners, you can get 20% off any of their great products over there. So make sure you start stocking up so you are clean and ready to roll for the 2021 season. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at my first loser of the first round. And it's the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, let me explain this one just a little bit before any Eagles fans out there get too heated. I will say this, okay? I give them credit for moving back up into the first round or moving back up in the first round to get Devonta Smith. They realized quickly that he was not going to fall, that the New York Giants were sitting there probably wanting to take him. So they go back up to 10 from 12 after falling from 6 to uh, 12 trading with the Miami Dolphins. But that, in turn, is why I picked them as my loser, or one of my losers here in the first round. Because at six, Jalen Waddle went to the Miami Dolphins. If the Eagles hadn't moved back, they would have been able to pick Jalen Waddle there. And if you listen to any of my mock drafts, Jalen Waddle is a better fit for the Eagles than what Devonta Smith is. Now, I don't mind Smith at all, but I think him and Rager are just a little too, are going to end up being a little too similar. I would have liked to have seen somebody that may have become or been able to become the the true alpha in that system. So the reason that I'm not loving this is because you could have had a much better option for you sitting at six where you were at one point in time. And then you fall back to 12, and then you realize, oh, crap, (laughs) we're not going to get our guy if we don't go back up to 10. So that was kind of that was kind of my thing there. I think they made the trade back thinking, oh, we're going to get Waddle to fall to us and we're going to be good and we're not going to have to worry about it. I will give some give them some credit, though. You know, you saw Smith sitting there. You had to make a move. You had to go get him or the Giants were going to get him. They did that. They moved back up. They moved back up and they grab him. So I will give them credit for that. But I just don't love how the first round played out for them because I feel like when they moved back, they thought Waddle was going to fall to them, and it just did not happen. Another loser of the first round is I don't entirely agree with agree with this one either. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys though. Now let me tell you, Micah Parsons, absolute. Beast. I know that there, there are some Cowboys fans out there that did not love this pick. The issue that I have is that 
I feel like Dallas looks at last year's draft and says, well, we got C.D. Lamb to fall to us. We're going to get somebody to fall to us this year. We're going to get a shot at one of these cornerback ones. So they weren't aggressive in wanting to make sure that they got their guy. They just stayed put, hoping that one of those quarterbacks would fall to them. When the draft started to play out the way it did, they should have made a move. They should have tried to go get their guy. It didn't happen, though. And then, instead of possibly trading back and then maybe getting like Caleb Farley a little bit later, because uh, let's face it, cornerback was really their main need. They, they needed someone. They go best player available here. So kind of like what they did last year, right? C.D. Lamb falls to them, best player available, and they go with him, even though they have Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. They didn't really need C.D. Lamb. They go best player available. This year, kind of the same thing. 12th overall, Micah Parsons sitting there, best player available. You got Leighton Van Der Esch already. You got uh, Jalen Smith already. You didn't really need a linebacker. Yeah, Sean Lee just retired, but did you need another linebacker? Could he have used a little bit of pressure on the edge? Could he have used an offensive lineman? Micah Parsons was 100% best player available here. And I get a lot of teams want to do that, and it works out well for a lot of teams. But this is now back-to-back years where the Dallas Cowboys essentially went best player available at positions that they didn't need. That's a little concerning for me. Now, if Leighton Van Der Esch can't stay healthy, goes down with an injury out a long time, you know, if something like that happens, then Micah Parsons at 12, absolute winner for them, 100%. But, you know, it's hard to just sit there and say, oh, we got to go this because Leighton Van Der Esch is going to be injured, unless you really truly feel that the medical evaluations are ugh, it, it, probably not the best move here. Okay, I like Micah Parsons. This is a scary linebacker core, the best in the NFL now. Hopefully he can create a little bit of pressure for them and help in kind of that edge situation. And maybe, you know, you don't go like a true hand in your ground edge and you use Micah Parsons a little bit instead. So I get the pick. I understand why they go that route. But going best of player, best player available back to back years at positions that you really didn't need. I don't know if that's the best use of first round picks when you've got a team that really kind of teetering on the brink right now. Okay, you've got a lot of money wrapped up into three players. Um, you've got you're you're pretty shallow in some positions. You can't really stop the pass. Are you going to be able to protect Dak this year? Those are why I have concerns about Micah Parsons going the way he did at number twelve, the seventeenth overall pick, the Las Vegas Raiders. There's, they are starting to make a habit of this, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't love it. I don't know why Mike Mayock and John Gruden feel the need to what I feel like is just outsmart everybody. I feel like they're like, oh, we've got to play chess while everyone's playing checkers and we're going to try and be. Why was Alex Leatherwood the pick here at 17? I mean, a lot of places, Alex Leatherwood was at best a round two pick. And you still had guys like Derisaw sitting on the board that you could have taken. You could have potentially maybe traded back if you contacted some teams. Alex Leatherwood is in the 60 range in terms of best players available in this draft. They've reached the last couple of years. They reached a cornerback. They reached on the defensive line with Clellan Farrell. They went Josh Jacobs when they really probably didn't need to, and he's been okay, but now you have Kenyon Drake. To me, it just really feels like over the last three years, it's been all about reaching for guys at positions that you might like, but you're like, oh, we're going to outsmart everybody else by making this draft pick and you probably could have waited, and they did it again with Alex Leatherwood. Now, I will admit, offensive line was a must for them in this draft, okay? They tore apart the offensive line this offseason. They need to build it back up. I don't know if Alex Leatherwood is the guy to really take that step and help right away in 2021. I would have much rather have saw Darisal, a guy that I think is a little bit, much, a little bit more pro-ready, in my opinion. So again, Mike Mayock, John Gruden, I don't know what you're doing out there, okay? 
but you certainly aren't playing chess right now, that's for sure. You might want to find another game because we're starting to really question after three years what you're doing with your draft prep. Kadarius Toney going to the New York Giants at the 20th overall spot. New York, a huge win moving back. A huge win moving back, so good for them there. I don't understand the fascination with needing to take a wide receiver. You've got Evan Ingram, right? You've got him. You've got you've got Sterling Shepard. You've got Darius Slayton. You've got Saquon Barkley. And, well, you just signed Kenny Galladay to a pretty big contract. Why do you need a wide receiver? What's the point? Why not work on the offensive line? Why not go for an edge rusher to create some more pressure? Kadarius Toney, to me, and I don't mind him. I think he's going to be a good football player. 20th overall at a position that you didn't need? Why? What was the point in that pick? This pick was probably the most questionable pick outside of Leatherwood for me in the first round. I just didn't get it. It didn't make any sense. You don't need a wide receiver. What's the point? You've got how many guys on your roster now that can catch the football? I mean, that's great. You're getting Daniel Jones weapons, but let's protect Daniel Jones a little bit. Let's keep him up and and healthy and safe. Let's get an edge rusher to help out on that defense. That's what you need. You didn't need a wide receiver. I don't get it. I, I don't really understand it. And if you're a Giants fan, I would love to hear more from you in the comments about whether or not you like this pick. Because honestly, I didn't like it. I haven't seen a whole lot of people that did like it. And it just didn't make a ton of sense to me. So, there you, there you have it. Headliner Nation. My round one losers for the NFL Draft. But honestly, can we say anyone's a loser right now? It's it's pretty tough, right? We've got to see these guys play. It's going to take us a couple of years to figure this out. It's hard to call anybody a loser on round one of the NFL draft. But ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. Below, If you're new here to the channel, subscribe as well. And as always in the comments, let me know your thoughts. Giants fans, let me know about Tony. For the rest of you, who did your team pick up? Who do you think the loser was in round one? Was there any of you that didn't love, that didn't love the picks that happened or didn't love the pick that your team made? And that join button for our new Holden Chubb membership is right down below next to the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that. $4.99 a month, you get a ton of cool stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks all for joining in. Appreciate you checking out this new video from the Fantasy Headliner. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.